Hey everybody, it's Mike DeShazer here in Seoul, South Korea at Proof Suite, and today we're going to talk about how to actually find arbitrage opportunities, specifically triangular arbitrage opportunities, on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, in the last few lessons, we talked about how to actually execute arbitrage, how to borrow funds from lending pools such as Aave and other DeFi platforms, but now let's look at how to actually identify the triangular arbitrage opportunities. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to find arbitrage opportunities in decentralized financial markets uh, such as Kyber, Uniswap, Bancor, etc. So I'm on this new site, uh, orfeed.org slash DeFi Arb Finder. And basically, this was a, a site uh, that was developed really quickly to kind of help people find arbitrage opportunities. Um, if you scroll down or just click on explore, it will uh, take you down here. This is basically the last big ARB window. Uh, so an explanation is down here. Usually arbitrage opportunities happen when there's a tremendous amount of volatility in the marketplace or in several marketplaces. This usually can be triggered from more liquid financial markets. So that in, in the crypto world, that, that would currently in 2020 be centralized crypto exchanges. So on those exchanges, a lot more volume is happening, you know, hundreds of millions to billions of dollars versus, you know, a few million to occasionally hundreds of thousands of dollars per day in these decentralized markets. What's interesting about the decentralized markets is that they actually, of course, are the only real trans fully transparent markets uh, as far as like the activity that we've ever really kind of had. Uh, and so they're very much an experiment because you can see all the trades and the trade history of all participants that are participating in it. Tools like this are, are needed to help people in this new, like very transparent market see uh, where there are arbitrage opportunities. But obviously it is a very competitive market because of the nature of arbitrage. So the best opportunities uh, these days is usually when there is a 1% change in popular markets such as Maker or Ethereum. So when ETH or Maker fluctuate within 60 seconds, uh, more than 1% up or down. Uh, there are major dislocations between centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges, and uh, you can kind of see those down here, uh, but we'll get to that and why uh, we're listing stable coins. This kind of just gives you an idea. The, last, the closer you are to the last big ARB window, uh, the more arbitrage there typically is across various markets. And then um, the number of big ARB windows, this basically gives you an idea. So in the last 24 hours, uh, there have been six major events whereby either Maker, which powers a lot of the decentralized markets today, or Ethereum, which is ne necessary for anything that's happening on Ethereum, uh, these these coins have fluctuated. And therefore, uh, the triangular arbitrage that we talked about like last week between a variety of uh, Ethereum-based tokens is also dislocated, and there there is then arbitrage. Uh, opportunities that are that are there so uh, to get you know a feel for it if you want to be alerted you could actually sign up it's a really simple tool it'll it'll send you an email every time it's happening uh, and that'll give you a chance to if you want to for example go and look at the different prices or try out you know on your smart contract and see the different um, you know the different cryptocurrencies F to USDC maybe or maybe you want to look at, you know, on you know, Kyber, or let's say you want to see on Uniswap. So there, there's uh, Kyber, but then we want to look at maybe Uniswap, you know, and get the different ideas. And this comes directly from the blockchain. Uh, and maybe, you know, you're interested in that to Maker, uh, but then you want to see, you know, maybe in Kyber things are happening a little differently. Uh, yeah, so you, you get these kind of things and when you go, uh, uh, you know, so and we'll add more features in here so that you can um, uh, soon in the next video, we'll talk about an easy tool that we're introducing where you can actually execute the ARB triangular or four way arbitrage directly from the Orfeed site. So that's coming. But uh, anyways, the thing that you would want to look out for uh, when you're pulling the blockchain, because, you know, usually if you're running, if you're running your own node, you obviously don't have a rate limit, but if you do 
uh, use like Infer or something like that, then you know you can't just pull the entire blockchain 24/7. You need to make thousands of calls uh, a second, and so or thousands of calls every you know block, which is every 15 seconds. So these windows are kind of be when you're you know making is a lot of calls when you're close to a big ARB window and all, when there's a lot of volatility. And um, yeah, get the the idea here is to kind of see that we're having less volatility right now. So this 24-hour period has been less volatile. Uh, when you're in a more volatile period, uh, typically you know you'll see more stuff. And so then, uh, if you'd want to get alerts, you could get alerts here. Uh, there's a unsubscribe button on every single one, so you can turn it off easily. And then you know maybe later, two days, three days, or you know a year later, you might want to come back and say, oh, subscribe again. So you can then subscribe again, and you just un, you know. Whenever you're kind of interested in really seeing, and that's for trading in general, uh, for people usually when there's a lot of volatility, that those are when all the biggest opportunities are available. So if you're doing arbitrage, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be going from, you know, maker to F to die back to maker and trying to accumulate more maker or trying to accumulate more stuff. If that's the case, you should just invest in. A particular cryptocurrency because you you have a, a idea that it's going to go up or something like that uh, but if you're performing arbitrage you're usually going between one of these major stable coins that's pegged to the US dollar and um, riskless arbitrage is when it's done on one of these platforms it's a swap platform rather than like an IDEX which you know you put an order out there something happens on a centralized server that matches orders etc and then a block later two blocks later you actually have a confirmation so uh, while places like IDEX you know have, are, are still fast and they uh, don't do too much of the way of custody these platforms are all instant right so you know the price is this and this so if your smart contract sees this and this you can go between DAI uh, and USDC or you know from Bancor on Bancor between you know these different swap platforms instantly all in one transaction um, and you're only paying the gas fee but usually you're going to be going between a stable coins and we'll probably see crypto euro and you know crypto Chinese yuan Korean yuan all these kind of other other stable coins emerge but right now in mid 2020 we're looking at a market where the most liquidity is always in the USD based tokens so DAI is obviously for Maker. Psi is the old version, which is still convertible to DAI. USDC is from Circle, which is backed by Goldman and uh, Coinbase. And then you have uh, USDT, which is just Tether, which has just been powering most of the crypto exchanges uh, outside of Ethereum and just recently ha has gotten into a Ethereum. And then uh, SUSD, which is really interesting because they have synthetic assets for all the different dollar currency so if you were doing forex you know you could use synthetics and susd in their marketplace and that's they're they're a very interesting swap platform uh and they have synthetic versions of many coins so they'll probably get added in uh synthetics is a will probably be in here in a while and then there's packs and there, there are a few others but these are the major ones and you can see you know there are you know one especially when you're closer to um a big arb window there are you know major uh, discrepancies you know that are over one sometimes up to two percent uh, four dollars is about two percent right now so you know there are some gaps in here um, now bank core is not as liquid but they have a new version coming out so we'll see what happens with that in regards to that so bank core uh, they're gonna update uh, their version so a lot of their smart contracts a lot of things might get deprecated and that's kind of the point of why we, we you know we built or so if you're building a smart contract right um, you know, that's immutable code, you know, and if you're interacting with Bancor, you might want to still be able to call the same function in your smart contract, like get exchange rate and say Bancor, right, or whatever provider you're, provi you're looking for. Uh, and that's kind of the, the idea there. If you go on the GitHub, there's a number of links, but one in particular is the Oracle Price Numerical Data uh, Rate Registry. And that is where you can see and find, uh, so for example, in the early days, these are all of the oracles that exist on uh, Orfeed. And then you can look them up by their, you know, by their name and get the data uh, for the person who registered them, who the owner is. So for example, I can see the owner. If I click, you know, Kyber, this is the owner. That's the address. Uh, here is the, the smart contract uh, that it's interfacing with. So I can easily see 
okay, this is a smart contract that gives me that data. It's verified, et cetera, um, that owns that. And the owner, um, so also, if you have a smart contract, you'd like to provide data, um, you know, random number data on a, a, cent a centralized exchange or synthetic or have your own code go through Orphe that you like, you trust that you built, but you know, that you might update, but you might want to provide to others or things like that. You can uh, purchase that name, uh, which for a very small fee just to prevent spamming and actually, you know, go to register Oracle. It's a uh, 0.05 F and then the name, the requested address, and then the info for people who might want to consume your data. And you could set whatever rules inside of your smart contract, right, uh, for interfacing. And then, you you know, that's more, that's, that's a whole other conversation. And maybe in, in future videos, we'll talk more about that. But uh, that is kind of, um, and you can also, you know, transfer ownership. So you could, you own your data feed, you could sell it to other people, they can, can they can take it over and whatnot directly uh, like that. So the Orphe contract proxies into this contract uh, to actually identify, like, for example, when you're saying, okay, here is the venue that I'd like to get data from, it goes through that registry system on, on, on the blockchain. And so, so that's kind of how, you know, when you put information in, it can update because synthetics changes where their smart contracts are. Bancor changes where their smart contracts are. Tokens change addresses. Die went to Psy. Psy went, to, you know, these things happen. So those kind of things, you know, can happen. And so, yeah, that's a quick uh, overview. To, to review, you'll basically usually be going from a stable coin back to a stable coin, given that they're all pegged to the dollar, but they dislocate in price. Uh, and you'll usually be going between two, three, or four different currencies in the middle that are dislocated when there is a lot of arbitrage uh, happening during, you know, when this would be like zero hours and like a few seconds. Um, so it's possible to get those alerts and you can hook those alerts into APIs and things uh, through like Mailgun or whatnot uh, if you'd like to programmatically do that. Um, and then there might be solutions uh, directly through Orfeed in the future for that. Um, that's highly possible. But in the next video, we'll talk about the new interface for actually just executing the ARB, whereby you don't have to go through like Remix or uh, Etherscan, but you can go directly on Orfeed, similar to how you kind of go on the Explorer now and can interface directly with the smart contract. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.